Today, we are going to discuss how this vessel, known as the Isles, in the EE4 game, went from the third greatest power in the British Isles in 1444, with them even being able to self-govern themselves, to losing all power by the end of the 15th century. So how did the Isles destroy themselves so quickly? But wait, before we begin, in my last history video, 75% of you who watched it aren't subscribed. So if you love history content, why not consider subscribing, like these lot? The story of the Isles begins in 1158, when a great Gaelic warrior, known as Somerled, was in charge of a Gaelic kingdom in the west of Scotland. Somerled managed to unite the Highlanders and Islanders against the Vikings, and became an independent state from both Scotland and Norway. Although Somerled died in a battle against the Scottish, and so consequently his Gaelic kingdom ended, his descendants carried on his legacy and inherited his lands under the Scottish crown. This was because one of Somerled's descendants, part of the Macdonald clan, fought with Robert the Bruce in the Battle of Bannockburn, which was a decisive victory for Scotland against the English. After the battle, Robert the Bruce gifted Somerled's descendants greatly with lands in the west of Scotland. Eventually, a descendant of Somerled's then became the first Lord of the Isles, who was known as John Macdonald. In 1329, Robert the Bruce suddenly died, bringing conflict to the Scottish Kingdom. A claimant offered John Lord of the Isles lands in return for support. John accepted these terms, but later on, Robert the Bruce's son David returned to Scotland and claimed the throne for himself. John was initially seen as a traitor, but was strangely easily forgiven by the incompetent King David, despite their support for his rival, and John was able to keep his lands in the west of Scotland. Seventeen years later, with the defeat of the Scottish in 1346 at the Battle of Neville Cross, the Scottish King David was imprisoned by the English. The politically astute Lord John then unsurprisingly swapped his allegiances and supported Robert Stuart, a claimant to the Scottish throne by marrying his daughter in 1350. With the death of King David in 1371, Robert Stuart became king and therefore John's father-in-law was the King of Scotland. It was clear therefore that John had a talent for backing the right people at the right time, which allowed him to recreate most of his ancestors' old kingdom under the Kingdom of Scotland. John made sure, however, he never gave the impression he was laying claim to be a king. He was all too aware of the danger that that may pose to a Scottish king, should the Lord of the Isles ever be perceived as a threat to Scotland. This was sadly a lesson his successors failed to learn. John then died in 1386, and his son Donald then took the lordship, becoming the second Lord of the Isles. Donald, at the beginning of his reign, spent time dealing with his younger brother, who wanted the lordship for himself. But by 1395, Donald had driven out his younger brother, John Moore, into exile. Donald was then able to turn his attention to the more serious problem facing him. In 1390, his cousin, Robert III, was a new king. However, he was a deeply ineffective king, and the real power lay in the hands of his ruthless and more ambitious younger brother, Robert, Duke of Albany. Eventually, the bitter rivalry between Lord Donald and Duke Robert led to the Battle of Harlaw, in 1411, over the land in Ross. Donald brought 10,000 men, and his objective was to defeat the Earl of Mar in order to make his way to Aberdeen. As the battle commenced, both sides had heavy casualties, and under the cover of darkness, the Lord of the Isles withdrew and gave up his claim to the land in Ross. Although Donald withdrew, in reality, it had been a bloody and costly engagement for both sides. Therefore, the winner was not clear, Eventually Donald died in 1423, and therefore his son Alexander took the lordship, becoming the third lord of the Isles, and is the starting ruler in the EU4. At the beginning of his reign, the Scottish King James held Lord Alexander in high regard. However, this changed when in 1426, Alexander had occupied much of Ross, and was using the title Eldom of Ross, despite the fact that the title was now a royal possession. The king, James, then invited Alexander to Inverness, and when Alexander showed up, he was arrested and put into jail. The king then tried to install his uncle, but this was unsuccessful, with the uncle being murdered by the messenger. King James's position was then weakened, and so he released the Isle Lord, 
on the promise of good behaviour. Alexander's good behaviour was to attack Inverness in the spring of 1429, so I don't think he really understood the message. The Isle Rebellion, however, didn't last long, and Alexander was captured by the king a few months later. James then tried to install someone else to control the Isle lands, but this seemed impossible, and so James released Alexander again on the promise of good behaviour, although this time James made sure that his good behaviour wouldn't waver by keeping his mother in captivity. Alexander would no longer go against the king, and instead built up his power base within the country. In strictly land terms, the end of Alexander's tenure as Lord of the Isles marked the high point of fortunes for Clan Donald. With Clan Donald controlling much of West Scotland, Alexander controlled a considerably larger area than Somerled had done at the height of his powers, though he did so with the permission from the Scottish Crown. Throughout this time, the Isles' power had grown, and they built a power base for admin and ceremonial purposes in Finlagen. This has been recently reconstructed by St Andrews University, and the Isle Lords decided administrative matters on a small island in the middle of the lake. Alexander died in 1449, leaving his son, John MacDonald II, to become the final Lord of the Isles. Many view him as the man whose political miscalculations threw away the enormous gains by Clan Macdonald since the days of Somerled. So let's find out how the Isles destroyed themselves. On the 4th of March 1461, Henry VI of England was deposed by Edward IV. Henry then fled into exile in Scotland where he received support from the new Scottish King, James III. In a blatant effort to start up trouble in Scotland, Edward IV sent an envoy to seek the support of John MacDonald II. The outcome in February 1462 was the Treaty of Westminster Ard Tornish, under which John would pay homage to Edward in return for English help. James III responded by dropping his support for Henry VI, preventing a war with England. In the mid-1470s, the English revealed the full terms of the treaty to James III. John MacDonald II was then stripped of large parts of his lands and titles. Though he retained the title Lord of the Isles, it was no longer to be inherited. In the face of this loss of prestige, John was overthrown as chief of Clan Macdonald in a coup mounted by his son, Angus Og. And this led to the Battle of Bloody Bay, where John Macdonald II was defeated by his son. This battle, although had a victor, many clansmen died, and nearly half the clan's fleet had been sunk which greatly diminished the Isles' power. John tried to reassert his power after the murder of Angus Og in 1490, but his efforts to regain the Eldom of Ross were fought off by the Mackenzies. And in 1493, James IV finally gave up on John as a force capable of controlling west of Scotland and stripped him of the title Lord of the Isles. John lived out his days in lowland Scotland on a royal pension, and he eventually died in Dundee in 1503. So to conclude, the Lord of the Isles went from the third most dominant power in the British Isles to destroying themselves at the Battle of Bloody Bay in the early 1480s. Enjoyed this video? Check out some of my other history videos and please consider supporting us on Patreon.